Okay, it's my pleasure to be here. I really appreciate uh, this uh, opportunity to be here. I, I would like to talk about the Susak syndrome uh, in my paper, published in Retina. Thank you. As uh, you know, Susak syndrome is a clinical trial that consists in, in encephalopathy, uh, recurrent branch retinal artery occlusion, and hearing loss uh, without prominent systemic manifestation. And the most important thing is the target is located at the precapillar arterial obstruction due to the circulating uh, anti endothelial uh, antibody. It's very important to know that all the symptoms do not occur at the same time at all. For this reason, it's very important when you, you see some patient with uh, retinal artery occlusion to keep in your mind that it could be a SUSAC disease. I appreciate Dr. Hamed to mention transgenolone in some ocular condition because in this research, I'm going to show you how transgenolone could be useful to treat Sussex syndrome. Okay, this is a 23-year-old female patient who had a triad, a typical triad syndrome, a clinical for Sussex syndrome, and this patient received and singer intra uh, of transgenolone and one week after the injection or the uh, ocular manifesta manifestation improved um, before uh, starting with systemic uh, treatment. I appreciate, as I already mentioned, Professor Hamed to mention the intra transgenolone in many other conditions. In this patient, uh, it's very important to rule out some condition like diabetes, hypertension, connective uh, tissue, because you know, Sussex syndrome have uh, a, a uh, some a strong relationship in the diagnosis, with, for example, so lupus erythematosa, uh, tuberculosis have uh, to be ruled out, and hematology process uh, problem. We need to uh, order uh, seed or S uh, of lady factor. Um, also, patients uh, need to be ruled out the uh, Barlow syndrome and uh, mitral uh, prolapse barb. Okay, the, the, this patient uh, do not you had no use uh, oral contraceptive. Uh, the patient was not uh, pregnant, and it is very important to notice that uh, the symptom start uh, one day, not not 15 days, one day before the hair presentation. And the division uh, acute in the left eye drop out to 20 to 100. Um, um, in the ocular fondant, we see it. this, um, as you can see there, uh, or the retinal look ischemic process. It means that axoplasmic float is, uh, is lower. Um, the, the asymmetry, but uh, the uh, bilateral affectation is very, very important to keep in our mind, especially when the patient have recurrent uh, process, uh, that is very important to keep in your mind, the Sussex syndrome. Okay, the fluorescing angiography, uh, angiography reveal um, a very important ischemic process, as you can see there. So it's very important to mention that the ischemic process occur at the artery, not on the vein as Dr. Ahmed mentioned during the last conference. And uh, here you can see important uh, ischemic process and in the right eye, some inflammation uh, uh, located at the artery. Okay, it's also important uh, mention that the uh, OCT show also hyper, sorry, hyperreflectivity in the, sorry, Sorry. Okay, it's important to see that uh, at court. Sorry. Okay. Okay, see the high reflectivity on the retina, uh, in the layer of the retina. Okay, um, it's very important to notice that uh, two days after the presentation, the patient uh, uh, 
mentioned that he had a hearing loss. Okay, remember when you have patient with the ischemic process, uh, artery occlusion, it's mandatory to ask uh, for hearing loss in the past. Because I asked uh, to this patient, uh, she mentioned that six months ago the, uh, she had the same problem. With the, these two sy symptoms, we, we have to keep more, uh, uh, you, you have to keep in your mind that the patient uh, should have a uh, suicide syndrome. Um, the patient also was admitted in for neurologists uh, for uh, severe he headache and, and tinnitus, and the, uh, the neurologist. Uh, need to rule out the uh, multiple sclerosis because uh, multiple sclerosis and Sussex syndrome uh, have a similar symptom. Okay, uh, it, it's very important in this patient to rule out lupus and um, uh, also uh, uh, any hematologic process like uh, deficit of uh, AS or C protein and the uh, uh, five factor. Okay, it's very important that the magnetic resonance, when we had that, uh, uh, and we suspect the patient has a Sussex syndrome, it's very important to focus on the callosus corpus, because uh, as you can see here, in the callosus corpus, uh, there is a paper in neuroradiology give, uh, written by the Dr. San. For him, uh, this is a new, uh, uh, in, it's, it's seen just uh, only in patients with Sussex syndrome. It's very important because the uh, multiple sclerosis uh, do not present this symptom. Okay, we, we uh, diagnose Sussex syndrome uh, because uh, we, the patient had uh, the triad, and we we uh, we, or, uh, we send the patient to the rheumatologist internal medicine. But the, the, the doctor refused the, the diagnosis, and this is the reason why we decide to, to inject transgenolone 4 mg intravitreal based on the, the Sussex syndrome is uh, some kind of endotelitis and vasculitis. And one week after the injection, the fluorescing angiography showed, as you can see there, Okay, all the ischemic process disappear. Uh, also, the OCT show that the macula are also improved. The patient, uh, one week after the uh, the intravitreal injection, so received uh, a systemic treatment, and one month after, uh, the, all the symptoms, headaches, tinnitus, um, uh, disappear and the patient improved. In conclusion, uh, intravitreal tr uh, transgenolone, uh, I, I think it's useful to treat some patients with Sussex syndrome, especially when the macula is uh, threatening. Th this paper was published in Retina Case Report. And I really appreciate your time. Any comment? Please, doctor. Thank you very much. Um, very interesting case, but uh, uh, as we almost treat the residents, so sex in Rome is. Uh, so, so sex syndrome is um, not a common disease, and uh, but. Uh, uh, as you said, that we, we should uh, strongly suspect it if we see a patient with retinal arteriolar occlusion uh, in association with hearing loss and tinnitus, and also encephalopathy, because it's a triad of uh, the macro and geopathy affecting the brain, retina, and cochlea. Right. And it is a life-threatening disease. And uh, perhaps sometimes uh, in, um, in our emergency room, we are the ones to make the diagnosis of this disease. And these patients, they need immunosuppressive therapy based on cyclophosphamide and other immunosuppressive drugs, uh, not only for the eye, but also uh, uh, life-saving. So uh, it's a good idea to give intravitreal triamcelone to control the, uh, the uh, yeah. steroid. And, uh, because, and uh, 
uh, to me, it's very difficult to, uh, to be convinced why intravitreal tram cell alone should control the systemic manifestations, like hearing loss, like uh, it's, it's, a, it's a local uh, steroid therapy. Yes, I agree with you, but remember, this is an endothelial pathway. And uh, the, the, the devastating vision, the patient needs to be treated as soon as possible with intravitreal that, 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 that is okay. Yes, but the patient uh, received uh, one week after uh, a systemic uh, steroid. Yes. Uh, but systemic steroids, uh, again, is not the ideal treatment for these patients. The, it's not the ideal treatment. The, the patients, they need cyclophosphamide because the steroids alone are not enough to control the inflammation in these patients. Yes. But you know, I, I, I am only retinal specialist. I am not a rheumatologist, uh, so I don't have any doubt that the, maybe the, any other the, the immunosuppression need to be uh, could be useful for this patient. But uh, I, I, I think the a patient who went uh, Susak syndrome and that maybe this is only one condition when you can't be treated with a uh, transgenolone because this is an endotheliopathy. All right, uh, and we, it's very important for the ophthalmology to be uh, sharp uh, with the diagnosis. Because if you offer uh, transgenolone in this patient, maybe the, uh, the day after the presentation, maybe the, the ocular font could be better. All right, I totally agree with the professor that the, the patient needs to be treated by the rheumatologist. But it's very important as uh, the internist uh, disagree with my diagnosis, okay? Maybe uh, the most important thing for us as a retinal specialist is to be clear when you are going to send the patient to the uh, internal rheumatologist, please, this patient has Susak syndrome and no other condition. Because when you send the patient to the rheumatologist, please, uh, the patient needs to be uh, searched for any condition. The rheumatologist don't know what, what to look for. All right, for this reason, it's very important. As, uh, for example, I would like to mention that the, uh, the MRI, the MRI was performed for very interesting and very uh, well-qualified uh, qualified doctor, but uh, the, uh, the, the, the bean doesn't pass for, for the uh, uh, callosus corpus, or, uh, corpus callosus. But I ordered him, okay, please, you have to go for the callosus corpus, because the most important thing is, please, MRI, taking the uh, corpus callosus, all right? Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, please, I, could you, I appreciate you, to, you take the microphone. Thank you, doctor, for this uh, presentation. It was uh, interesting. Um, I did not get the point, what is the difference exactly between the corpus callosal lesions in MS and the Susak syndrome? Uh, you mean that, that all right, uh, as I already mentioned, Professor Sand and neuro, uh, neurology and, and, and uh, neuroradiology had a paper written by him that he mentioned the lesion in the callosal corpus is uh, unique for, for Susak syndrome and not for, for example, uh, uh, multiple sclerosis. And that is very important. And, we need to be clear that uh, suicide uh, uh, is not a multiple sclerosis because uh, even though the both uh, have similar symptoms, if you treat this patient with, uh, for example, interferon, uh, if you think the patient has multiple sclerosis, uh, uh, there is many paper about the interferon could aggravate the, the suicide retinopathy for the reason uh, looking for the corpus callosum is only for Susak, not for n any other condition. The few patients uh, that I managed with Susak syndrome were all admitted at neurology department with a diagnosis of MS, multiple sclerosis, because uh, similarities of the clinical manifestations as well as uh, the MRI findings. And we, as um, retinal specialists, are the ones to make the diagnosis once we see this multiple retinal arteriolar occlusions, which uh, with a specific pattern of leakage of the dye uh, in the occluded arterioles. And uh, I still remember the first case I called the neurologist, I told him, Your patient had Susak syndrome. And he said, oh, What is Susak syndrome? He didn't know about it. So uh, after looking at the literature, so now they became more familiar 
with the diagnosis of Sussex syndrome, but uh, it is us as retina specialists or reverse specialists who, who will make the, the definitive diagnosis of Sussex syndrome rather than the neurologist, just by looking at the retina. Yeah, you're right. Okay, okay. I don't have any doubt that. Uh, but, you know, uh, multiple sclerosis, the more uh, typical presentation is a bilateral or unilateral optic neuritis, and 20% of the patients have uh, the rocket sign at the periphery. But uh, even though there is some paper about uh, uh, vascular occlusion and multiple sclerosis at the retina, it's not very common. All right, uh, for this reason, in this patient w was admitted by the neurology, the neurology department because the patient has a headache, um, um, tinnitus, and the neurologist think it could be the multiple sclerosis, but two days after the patient has um, vascular occlusion. Um, okay, the most important thing for us uh, is when we have some problem that we suspect a systemic process, it's very important to go out from the eyes because if you are always think, uh, seeing the retina, okay, you are losing an important amount of sun. Okay, Bechet syndrome is uh, to make the diagnosis, you have to go out to see the looking for the skin lesion, lesion in the mouse uh, or something like this. Um, many other conditions, lupus, erythematosus, uh, um, many other. So go out to, uh, from the eyes and, okay, see the skin um, that have, uh, in, in Susak, you have to look, uh, focus on the, the callosus, uh, corpus callosum, okay? okay? And the lesion in the corpus callosum is a paternal moniker for this, uh, for this disease. Okay, this patient had had uh, three surgeries before when I received. Um, I would like to show you the most important step when you are starting is please uh, try to enjoy the, what you are doing. Okay, second, please, uh, you, you have to diatomize the, all the fibrotic tissues. Um, I put the, as you can see, the anterior chamber maintainer because the patient had uh, also had a, a supracoloid hemorrhage. Uh, okay, I drainage, okay. But the step is you need to remove off the, all the fibrotic tissue, especially close to the ciliary bodies, because, uh, you know, sometimes even the surgery is well done, uh, the patient has uh, a hypotonic. All, all right, when I, I saw the, the, the posterior report, the patient had the giant T with PVR, um, the step is try to remove all the epiretinal membrane first, and then go to the subretinal space, try to remove all the membrane. Uh, it's important to notice that I only use in one, one hand, okay? I don't use, at uh, this time, uh, chandelier. Uh, as it's a very important tool, but uh, you, you, you can also improve and cure uh, some retinal detachment like this. So be patient, um, enjoy what, what you are doing. I try to localize every membrane, okay? So it's very important to rule out or to confirm, uh, to exclude some subretinal membrane because uh, if you don't remove the membrane, you, you cannot uh, flatten the retina using perforal carbon. And then, step by step, you can remove all the uh, fibrotic tissue, as you can see there. Uh, maybe is uh, using the chandelier. Is chandelier is for fellow. It's, it's easier to perform the surgery. Okay, but remove. Um, and then, okay, okay. Uh, it's very important to be familiar. I went every every fold. Uh, Every fault, uh, fault help you to, to look like the epiretinal membrane. And then, okay, it's very important to di diatomize the, the border, okay, to, for, to remove the PVR. The most important thing is very important. You have to know what to do, all right? Because uh, don't waste time, you know, moving the from one side to the other. And then air through is changed. I, if I feel I put more uh, perforal carbon. When I realized that the perforal carbon let me to perform that, okay? And then 
laser and silicon oil uh, was applied. Um, and it's, uh, it's okay. Thank you very much.